All right, good morning, everybody. I invite you to stand as we begin worship together at the font. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So then let us turn away from our sin and turn toward, turn toward Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Christ. Forgive our, our disobedience to your will. Where we have sinned, forgive and heal us. Your son was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Where we have sinned, forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flock in Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. Where we have sinned, forgive us and heal us. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. Where we have sinned, forgive and heal us. Dear beloved, Almighty God and Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. May God forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's glory, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
we may have joy he came down that we may have joy he came down that we may have joy hallelujah forevermore let us pray stir up your power lord christ and come with your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith so that we may eagerly receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 7. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For behold, before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. Word of God, word of life. Hero shepherd, lead me just like a flock. Shine forth you that are in front of the cherubim. In the presence of the Lord and the stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O oh God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O oh, Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have made us the derision of our neighbors. And our enemies laugh us to scorn. The second reading is from Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God, with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thank you. 
is calling through the word inviting forgiveness word and joy this is the holy gospel according to saint matthew glory to you o lord now the birth of jesus the messiah took place in this way when his mother mary had been engaged to joseph but before they lived together she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss Mary quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son and he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So we've spent these four weeks in Advent thinking about prayer, and every the week's readings and put them in conversation with a theme from James Martin's book, Learning to Pray. And so far we've done transformation, honesty, and expectations, and this week, we're going to be thinking about presence. And we're close enough to Christmas, I need to say, this is not presence, E-N-T-S. This is E-N-C-E, presence. So about a thousand years ago, there was this man named Vladimir, and he was the prince of Kiev. And he made some military agreement with the Byzantine Empire that involved a whole bunch of weapons, a bunch of strategic marriages. And for one reason or another, part of the deal was that Vladimir, who was a pagan, had to adopt some kind of religious practice. And Vladimir didn't know what kind of practice he wanted to adopt, so he got a bunch of his assistants together and said, you're going to go travel all around the world and see how people worship. Well, it's what they thought was the world. You're going to travel all around and see how different people worship. Come back, tell me what they do, and then I'll choose which one I like best. So as assistants go, they travel all around and they report back on what they find. And sometimes they go places. There's a scene early on where they go to this Germanic village and they go to worship and they say, it was fine. It would not be my first choice, but if that was the only church, like that would be fine for you. But eventually they end up in modern day Istanbul and they go to the Hagia Sophia. Has anyone here ever been to the Hagia Sophia? One. You've seen pictures of it. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. So they, go to the, so they go to the Hagia Sophia, they go to church there, and this is the report they write back. They say, quote, We knew not whether we were in heaven or on earth. For on earth there is no such vision or beauty, and we do not know how to describe it. We only know that God dwells there among men. So what's interesting for our purposes this morning is not which option Vladimir chose. You can go ahead and guess. It's the experience these assistants had when they went into the Hagia Sophia. We didn't know whether we were in heaven or on earth. We only know that God dwells there. And maybe you have your own kind of metaphorical Hagia Sophia. You have a place where you go and you feel like you're in the presence of God. And maybe it's an actual place. It's a church, a cathedral or something where the stained glass is perfect. Maybe it's a hymn with a melody that gets you every time. It could be a day on our liturgical calendar, a prayer you come back to. But it's that place we go where we feel like we're in the presence of God. And it's great to have this place to go and be in God's presence, except there's one small problem with it, which is at some point you have to leave. Eventually, Vladimir's assistants had to leave the Hagia Sophia, where they didn't know if they were in heaven or on earth, and go back outside, where they were clearly on earth. And you notice when they described this experience, they said, quote, God dwells there, meaning it doesn't feel like God dwells here. And we might feel the same way. 
that even if we have a place where we feel like we're in the presence of God, we can't just stay there forever. And so we spend feeling like God is somewhere else. God dwells over there, try to get there as often as we can. And that desire to be in God's presence is also what today's gospel reading was all about. St. Matthew tells us about a dream that Joseph had where he has a conversation with an angel. And if you think back to your Old Testament stories, dreams are often how God communicates. So Jacob's ladder is a dream story. Joseph is talented because he can interpret dreams. What happens in dreams is important. So this angel appears to Joseph in the dream and says, Look, Mary shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. And Matthew helpfully adds, Emmanuel means God is with us. So the title Emmanuel means that God isn't just over there, but that God is actually here. And for the characters in the nativity story, for Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the magi, all the rest, it makes sense, right? Jesus is here. He's in the flesh. He's in the manger. You can go over there and look for yourself. And it would be easy to feel like all of us have been left out. We weren't alive when Jesus was actually here, actually Emmanuel. The Magi were 12 days late to the party, and we're about 2,000 years late. But Jesus isn't just Emmanuel for those characters in the nativity story. Jesus is Emmanuel for all of us. Because Jesus has been raised from death and given us the gift of the Holy Spirit, Jesus remains present within and among us. So there's no place, no experience that we have in life where we aren't in the presence of God. When we say that Jesus is Emmanuel, we don't mean that God used to be with us 2,000 years ago in this one small town. We mean that God is with us this day and always through the Holy Spirit. So next weekend, when we sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing, you'll notice we'll sing, Pleased with us in flesh to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Not just their Emmanuel, but our Emmanuel. So what does any of this have to do with prayer? Well, we often think of prayer as our own little Hagia Sophia. When I pray, I'm in the presence of God, and then I stop praying, and I go out and try to make a go of it on my own. And when I get tired or worn out, I go back and pray so I can recharge my batteries. But if Jesus is God with us now, that means we're never really making a go of life by ourselves. We're always living with God. As St. Augustine once put it, God is closer to me than I am to myself. So one of the ways Martin talks about the presence of God in his book is through the practice of centering prayer. Has anyone here done centering prayer? Good. You'll see why it's good in a second. In many of the prayer practices he talks about in this book, the ones we've done a lot of these together, actually, they have steps, they have some kind of process, right? Ignatian contemplation has a process, the examine has steps, Lectio Divina has a series of questions. Centering prayer is the absence of process. It's simply, his phrase, placing ourselves in God's presence. So if you've ever felt like you needed to just be quiet, sit still, be in God's presence, and get your head on straight, you have done centering prayer. You didn't know you were doing it, but that's actually what you were doing. It's simply being in the presence of God. And if you're like me and you can't sit still without thinking about whether you called someone back or you sent that email or you forgot something at the grocery store, you can simply pick a word or two from Scripture and return to that word whenever you notice yourself drifting away. So we return to God's presence. And the point of centering prayer is not that you spend time with God to recharge your batteries and then crush your to-do list. You make all those phone calls and emails. In prayer is that it helps us focus our attention on the ways God is with us, not just when we're choosing to be in God's presence, but when we're just living on autopilot. So if you think back to the story of Vladimir's associates and the Hagia Sophia, and you've all seen pictures of this, it's easy to understand why they felt like they were in the presence of God. It has these enormous golden murals. The prayers would have been been echoing off the walls. Even a thousand years ago, people had been worshiping there for centuries already. 
So on some level, it's like, well, duh, of course you thought God dwelt there, right? How could you not feel that? But as today's gospel reminds us, God is also present with us in the more mundane places too. That God is present in hospital waiting rooms. That God is present when we're eating last night's leftovers. That God is present when we're not sure exactly how we should help a friend. So we don't need to escape our lives to find God. But to use the old Jesuit phrase, we seek to find God in all things. That underneath our anxiety, our busyness, our boredom and confusion, that God is right there with us. In Jesus, God is Emmanuel, closer to us than we are to ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To tell the story My theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story. Tell it so wonderfully sweet. Hey. Let's join together with the church around the world as we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, 
and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken it through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and for the life of the world to come. Amen. Invite the assembly to sit or kneel for the reading of today's prayers. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, our shepherd, let your spirit move with power throughout the church. Give discernment and wisdom to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Take away our fear so that we serve and love, confident that you are guiding us. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God, our source, awaken us to the beauty of the earth and the marvelous variety of life. Unite humankind in repairing and caring for your creation. Protect creatures and habitats in peril due to rising seas and warming temperatures. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our vision, raise up leaders in every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. We pray for the work of international organizations that promote peace and human rights. We pray especially this week for the people of China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our helper, come to the aid of all who cry out to you. Shelter migrants, refugees, and those fleeing war and famine. Bring relief to individuals and families experiencing hunger, homelessness, or impoverishment. Comfort any who are isolated or lonely. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our Emmanuel, you are with us in our life together. We give you thanks for gathering us in worship and fellowship. And we remember those who cannot be present. Watch over those who travel. Heal the sick and speed their recovery. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died. Keep us in communion with all the saints until we at last find our rest in you. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We offer these prayers in the name of the one who comes to us as a child, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Thank you, John. We are not for him. Use our voices. Lord, and the 
and filled to the brim of cup and blessing. Oh, thank you, John. Harvest from the seed there is sown, fed with the bread of life. With the prayers we offer, is to come. Let us pray. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread, wine, and money, and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Lord, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the word. You are holy, God. Holy One, at the beginning and end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you for your covenants to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's visions of justice. Blessed are you for Mary's yes to your call. And blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth and we long for your spirit at this meal. May that word take flesh in us. Fill us with your light as we bring the gift of your peace on this earth. For all praise and glory belong unto you, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, so that when he shall appear, he may find us active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Does anyone have any announcements they'd like to share? Yes, Jody. Yes, Jody. All right. Thank you. I have a card I want to share. I got this yesterday. This is from Ramon Calazzo, who's an ELCA pastor in Elizabeth. Uh, we gave them an endowment grant for 
they have a computer lab in the church people use to look for jobs and apply for jobs. And he says, uh, dear members of the congregation, on behalf of Santa Isabel ELCA, I would like to sincerely thank you for your generous gift. Through your donation, we can continue to work in the development of the computer class program. Thanks to your contribution, we've been able to buy a computer and are working in the preparation of the computer classroom. Thank you again. God bless you, Reverend Ramon Colazzo. So you should be aware of that. Uh, as Jody mentioned, next week is Christmas. There's a whole bunch of information on the website that you can look at. If you have questions and whatever information you want isn't there, please call, text, email, whatever, me. Uh, and I'm happy to get you the right information. If you are out of town with family or anything, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and I look forward to seeing you uh, in the new year. So that's all I have. Oh, yes, Matt. Yeah. Okay. 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 Excellent. Thank you for it. Yes, Caressa. Yes. Yes. So the 5 p.m. service is basically a version of this, right? So you have communion, you have a 10 minute homily or so. There's probably four hymns or something. Um, the 7 p.m. service is lessons and carols, which means it has probably seven or eight hymns. It has a shorter homily, there's no communion, and it has a candlelight hymn at the end. So if you were here four o'clock last year, four o'clock last year is now seven o'clock this year. So if you have additional questions, um, you can talk to me. The bulletins are on the website if you really wanna see what we're gonna be doing. Good question, yes. I do. We have a guest organist at five o'clock. We'll be using the organ at seven o'clock as well. Fred will be here on Christmas morning. So what I would say is if you're someone who likes receiving communion, five o'clock makes sense. If you're someone who wants to have a bunch of music, seven o'clock makes sense. If your kids have had you up opening gifts at 7 a.m. on Christmas day, then we'll be here at 930. And so that's a good option for you too. Uh, good question. Invite you to receive the blessing. May God the Father, who loved the world so much, he sent his only Son to give you grace to prepare for life eternal. May God the Son, who comes as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness into light. And may God the Holy Spirit, by whose working Mary bore the Christ child, help you bear the fruits of holiness. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Still go out for joy and be led forth in peace. To joy in all the trees of the field. Of the fields of black the head. The field of the fields will clap the head. Come you go out with joy. With joy and be led forth in peace. And the mountains and the hills will be born before you be found the Lord. And all the trees of the field will clap the head.